This one's going to be all on linked dipoles. So what is a linked dipole? Just write this down first. A linked dipole is exactly what it, what it says. It's a dipole that's broken up into multiple sections and they linked. So for a normal dipole, you'd have your one-to-one -one balin and then you've got your the wire coming down. That's the same length, both sides. So if you decide, okay, when are you going to use a link dipole? Generally, you're going to use a link dipole if you go away for a holiday, if you're doing an activation, uh, if you're in a competition or there's a field day. Uh, with a link dipole, you've got to change the links for the frequency changes. So it's not resonant on all the frequencies. It's resonant on the frequencies, on the frequency for which the links are in or out. I'll explain that a little bit later. So I'm going to go away on holiday and I want 80 meters, 60 meters and 40 meters, for example. So the, the, long, the, the lowest frequency will be the longest length, which is 80 meters. So I say, okay. Call it 3.7 megahertz because that's where the, the net is. And then I want 5.36 megahertz, 60 meters. And I want 7.1 megahertz. So I'm just going to do this very roughly. So that's 80 meters, that's 60 meters, and that's 40 meters. So the dipole is going to be roughly a quarter of that. This is just very rough. I'll show you later in detail. So for 80 meters, each dipole is going to be a quarter. So it's going to be 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters. So the longest is 20. So the longest one will be 20 meters which is going to be for 3.7 megs we then going to cut the wire and put in a link so that's something like this so i'm going to have a link that i can unplug and i can plug in when it's unplugged that part of the wire is ignored so the next length will be from there and that's going to be for five megs so 15 meters long 15 meters and that's for 5.36 megahertz the last one is for 40 meters and that's 10 meters so i'm going to cut it again put another link in and that one is going to be 10 meters and that is going to be for 40 megs, uh, sorry, 7 megs. So that's essentially what a linked dipole is. So it's one wire and it's got links that you unplug or plug. So obviously if I want to use uh, 7 megs, I'm going to unplug this. So that is excluded from the length. So that's out. We've only got the, the 40 meters. If I want to use 5.36 megs or 60 meters, that link will be plugged in, that link will be plugged out. If I want to use 80 meters, I'm going to have them all plugged in so that the total length is the quarter wave. So that's essentially what it is. It is not ideal for your home. For the simple reason is if you want to change bands, you've got to go out to the antenna and you're going to have to lower the balin, you're going to have to unplug or plug and pull the balin back up and tighten all the things. So it's a bit of a mission, but it's perfect for a competition where um, John is working on 40 meters, uh, Peter's working on 20, and Susan's working on 10. So you've each got an antenna, <coughs> excuse me, you've each got an antenna and you're on a designated band. You're not changing bands. So that's the whole idea. Uh, when we do the calculations, you'll see it's not 
not all that easy because when you've got these little links this piece of wire which forms part of the link is still part of the uh, antenna so you've got to take everything into account it's not like a normal dipole where you've just got some insulator at the end but we'll talk about this a little bit later but that's the idea of the linked dipole so what we're going to do you've got the wire running up and you've got to do something here and the wire over there so over here there's a variety of things you can use it must not be metal so i went to the local hardware shop and i bought these white nylon rings they're just white nylon and I'll show you in a moment how I attach the wire to them. But then what you need to do is take the wire from here and loop it. So the wire is going to go through there. And then over here, we're going to join them somehow. So when I have it plugged in. So this little bit of wire is also going to form part of the antenna. So you need to decide how you want to do that. So what I, well, there's different things to use, but what you can use for that joint is normal banana plugs. So you have them plugged in and you plug it out. So I use these nylon rings. Well, I can use them. I haven't always used them. Something that makes it quite neat. If you take a little bit of heat shrink. So it looks like that and then do the same on the other side Right. So that's how the link would work. What you've got to keep in mind is that these wires can't be too short because otherwise there's tension in the plug, which is not ideal. So like this now, it's just long enough. I find if we make these wires anything from 8 to 10 centimeters long, keep in mind they do form part of the antenna. So when I disconnect them and the antenna is hanging, um, this now does become part of the antenna. So, there we go. In this case, it's actually going to we'll do this the other way. It will be hanging like that. And that is the link dipole. So, we go back to our calculations like we had last time. What I want to do, okay, if we assume we're going to make a link dipole for two frequencies, uh, six meters and ten meters. So if we want to work out the length, We've discussed this in previous videos. 
it's the speed of light divided by the frequency. So if we work in hertz and just 300, not 300 times 10 to the 8, divided by uh, 54 megs, 300 divided by 29 megs, that's going to be equal to... So it's 5.56 meters, that's a full wavelength, and 300 divided by 29 is 10.35 meters full wavelength. The dipole is obviously quarter wave, quarter wave, so if we divide it by 4, divide it by 4, And 1.39. Now, of course, we've got a velocity factor. Which is about 95%, roughly. So we're going to say the 6 meters is 1.39 times 0.95. And 10 meters is going to be 2.59 times 0.95. So that's 1.31 meters or 32 meters. That's 2.46 meters. So the highest frequency would be the start. So here is the Balin, one to one. We've got one wire there, one wire there. And somewhere over here, we're going to break it. And over here, we're going to put an insulator. So the longest is 2.56. So the first one will be 1.32. And if we say 2.46, <coughs> Minus 1.32, that gives me 1.14. So the top element is the 6 meter element, it's 1.32, and the bottom element is 1.14. And that's it. It takes quite a lot of work actually to get the SWR sorted because of the loop. Because of our loop, um, the lengths don't always work out exactly like this, but it'll be very close, so you can make this and then adjust it as necessary. So what I do, I will make the first one, and I will just put string on here, and I will set the SWR on the 6 meter until it's round about 1.2. I will then add the second wire, plug it in, tie a piece of string on the end, and adjust this until the SWR for the total is about 1.2. Once I'm happy with it, I'll bend it over, put more heat shrink on the end, and connect this to the balin. And it's really that easy. So I hope this gives you a little bit of insight. So that's how a link dipole works. It's not a typical house antenna, base antenna, because you've got to go and unplug it when you change bands. But it's perfect for a, a DX event or a field day where you're working on 20 meters and the other person is using a different antenna on 40. The other thing that I find very nice is that it's resonant. SWR using a Balin is really good. Um, generally, I get I get the SWR to between 1.2 and 1.3, usually 1.2. Takes a little bit of work, but um, it's, I'm very happy with link dipoles. So uh, let me know. Try it and experiment. <laughs> <laughs>